Hi, this is Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. I want to share something with you guys. I saw a movie that really, really was troubling. I mean, I cried through the movie, seeing the suffering that had to be endured. And it was so unnecessary because this person did what the Bible said not to do. She leaned to her own understanding and she did not acknowledge God in all her ways. So he was not able to direct her path in that even though he tried, she turned a deaf ear and paid a severe penalty for doing so. All right. Now, this was not God's punishment. This was a consequence of not taking heed to a warning. All right. Now, in this movie, this was a young, vibrant woman with a, a sister, a parents, loving family. She was heading out to visit her friends. And I guess she caught a ride halfway. And instead of waiting for a train or whatever, she decided to hitchhike. So she gets an offer from a man, a woman, holding a baby. So she's thinking, oh, a family, how sweet. She gets in the car. They have to stop on their way. They have to stop and get gas. Now, while they go to get gas, guess what she does? She has to use the restroom. So she goes into the restroom. This is her only chance now. She goes into the restroom, and while she's in the restroom, <laughs> while she's in the restroom, this voice starts speaking in her head in thought patterns. Go out the back. Run. Run toward the woods. Run into the woods. And don't look back. Run. And don't look back. Run. And don't look back. <laughs> where could that thought have come from? I mean, I mean, that's a wife and a baby and a husband. What harm could they do? She got back in the car. They drive and turn off a side road, a little country road. Well, she's still ignoring and ignoring and ignoring. Didn't make sense for them to go off the beaten path. Nobody around for miles to hear a scream. Nothing. The woman gets out of the car. You could see the apprehension in her body language. But she gets out of the car with the baby. Walks over near the river. And while she holds the baby, the man, grabs the woman in the back seat, handcuffs her, pulls a box, sticks her head in the box, closes it on her neck like a guillotine. Now she's her head is trapped in the box. She's handcuffed and she's got a muzzle tied around her mouth. She can't move. That box is locked down where she can't even raise it up. She's in the back seat in that position. The wife gets back in the car. Not the wife, but the woman with the baby, not his wife, gets in the car. And they head two, maybe two or three miles to the house. Now she's brought in with the box on her head and she's placed inside of a room. He strips her clothes off of her. The other woman is somewhere in the other part of the house. She's screaming, please don't hurt me, please, 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 too late. He handcuffs her. She's standing there butt naked with her legs cuffed, her hands cuffed, and she's stretched out like an X. I mean, arms all up in the air, legs down, parted and he's standing there with a, a whip and he's literally beating her back. He's 
whipping that whip across her back. He's beginning the breakdown process. After he whoops her, he makes her get back in the box. Handcuffs, tied, mouth all tied up, box closed with a little tube pumping air in it. He must have killed a few others not knowing they needed air. But anyway, so he's got air pumped in. But she's stuck in that box three years in a row. Only gets out for one hour and then has to get back in. Then he lets her out a little bit longer and a little bit longer. And finally, he decides, now you're ready. And she becomes their indentured slave. She has to cook, clean, serve them hand and foot. And while she's serving their needs, in between time, she serves his at his whim. He handcuffs her lays her on the bed face down, and rapes her repeatedly. Every once in a while, she gets a whooping. She only gets fed once a day. She's highly dehydrated, malnourished, but she's in this box, constantly having her spirit beaten out of her. After years and years of this treatment, he finally starts letting her out in the sunlight, I think, after six or eight years. Yeah, it went on that long, you guys. I'm not even going to go into the whole story. But the bottom line is the other woman helps her escape. They both escape. This is after 12 years, 11 and a half, going on 12. And she's able to get back to her family. The family knows she is not the same. She'll never be the same. All that bubbly personality, gone. She's sane, barely, but gone. I want to ask you a question. I told you this story for a reason. I hope you listen to it. How many of you are entering into a relationship right now? We're not even talking being kidnapped. A relationship. where you have been getting checks in your spirit, checks left hand and right, and you know that you're hearing something. You know something's not sitting right in your gut, but you're ignoring it because he's cute or she's fine and she's stacked like a brick house or he's got money or she's got status, whatever the case may be, or they have charm. Mm-hmm. And you got that check in your gut and you know something's not right. You don't know what it is, but you know something's not right because you feel it. But against all, all that, you're going by how your body tingles when you're around them. And how everyone seems to like them when you get around your friends. Mm -hmm. But then you have that one. There's always that one buzz kill that tells you, Something about this one isn't right. But you ignore that too. So God has pulled out all stops to show you, even allow you to get a little preview of their temper. And you ignore that. How far do you have to go before you're trapped? How far do you have to go before you're damaged goods? How far do you have to go before you die? This man would have killed her if he had gotten his hands back on her. But as a result, they were able to call the police, have him arrested, and the evidence was everywhere on her body. It was everywhere. It was all in the house. It was underground where he had buried the other women that didn't line up like she did. And the woman with the baby, she was his first little slave. So, watch that check. You listen when God warns you. You listen. Stop being so doggone smart. I don't care if you have an IQ of 200. You're a doggone fool if you ignore God's warning. Please, be careful out there. Everybody out there with a smile. 
is not always nice. It's what you call a sheep in wolves' clothing. 